Hello and welcome to the show today. My guest is a talented voice actor and reviewer. Let's go to a clip now to see a bit of his work. 19. Yes, 19 sisters, ranging from 18 to newborn. What? This is just ridiculous! I mean, I'm only three minutes in and I'm already lost! I mean, how could these kids be sisters? They don't look alike! It seems like the rice has started to just write every single imaginable stereotype, so no otaku would be left out. I, I can't keep your head round this. I'm gonna need a roll call. Okay. We've got... Miharu Mizore, Haruka Hikaru, Hotaru Surara, Rika Kasame, Urara Seika, Yuna Fubuki, Watayuki Mari, Mizuki Sakura, Nijiko Sora, and Asahi. I'm not gonna remember that, so I don't expect you to either. The kids and Isn't that great to listen to? Ladies and gentlemen, Marsako X. Thank you very hi. much for coming to the show. Ah, hi there. Hi, it's good to be here. Now of course we we'll always start with the these interviews. Um of course you're a voice actor as well as a reviewer, so we'll start with that. What got you into voice acting? Well, what got me into voice acting was all about um there was a flash animation back in two thousand and five called Bonus Stage. It was done by Matt Wilson on the animated diversions forums. And uh, eventually he got a new uh, voice actress by the name of uh, Kagome Higarashi at the time. She's now better known as Rina Chan on on the intertubes. And I was just in awe of her voice and I just got in contact with her and just said, you know, I want to do voice acting. Where could I go to do it? And she pointed me towards the Voice Acting Alliance. And from there I I learned the basics and I auditioned for things and eventually that got me into all my bridge parodies and my voice acting of that ilk. I mean, really, essentially, I owe everything to Rina Chan. Yeah. She's actually known... She actually has has quite a few professional credits as well by the name of Kira Buckland. Yeah, so she's she's really cool and I owe everything to her and I will always say that. Very nice. <laughs> so what's like the hardest part for you when it comes to um, voice acting? Uh, the hardest part, really, um, you can get frustrated at times because uh, if you don't organise your recording well, so that means if you just go line by line, regardless of the volume, like, say, if you have a quiet line first, then you've got a really loud one after that, uh, you kind of end up screwing your voice up. So, really, the one thing I learned that over those times, and I've fallen foul of many times is that do your loud do your loud lines last make a note of them as you go along and then do the loud ones at the end so that means you're more you're less likely to end up um damaging your voice and having to either take a break for an hour or so or to stop entirely so it's just um knowing your limitations that's that's kind of an embuggerance almost because you would you just feel like you can do anything you feel like you're immortal but actually you're not Unless you're doing like no, something normal, you can go on for ages. I mean, nowadays like, with practice, your stamina increases. I mean, my for episode 28 and 29 of uh, DBZ Abridged, I was able to record for Goku for 130 lines, and I managed to do it for, for about like um, two hours. Yeah. So, you know, uh, over time it does increase. It's just patience is required. That uh, is very good advice. I think people are definitely going to take that on board. Mm. So, of course, along with the voice acting, uh, you also did a show um, like explaining voice acting. So, so what got you to that? Did you just want to pass on some knowledge to do it? Yeah, that, uh, that's pretty much it, really. I mean, I I got so many questions uh, via YouTube at the time asking me about voice acting tips. So I decided to, um, and I wanted to give something back to the fans. So I just thought, I know, let's make a few programs just showing the basics about online voice acting. There is a difference between voice acting in, the, in a professional studio and online because there are limitations in terms of budget and technology because you can't get studio quality microphones for a very reasonable price. But you can get some good microphones and you can certainly uh, get productions and audio recordings that sound quite good. I mean, if you're prepared to you know, fork out a bit more money, you can get a setup like I have, which is a Blue Yeti USB microphone which is about 150 bucks, and then get the mic stand, pop filter, and surround, about 200 bucks. If you're prepared to put out the outlay and you know that you're wanting to do this for a 
more than just a hobby. Or, yeah, or if you just really want to put the effort in, like musicians do when, you know, when they want to do as a hobby. It's all about investment. But, really, you can do wonders, or you can do a lot with uh, just a standard USB desktop microphone for about 20 bucks. So, that's what I did with Master of Arts, which you can still find on that guy with the glasses, by the way. And the 12 episodes encompasses techniques, kit, and general advice, and just tips. Uh, you mentioned just then, like, dankguideglass.com. Uh, you got a show on there as well, uh, Annex File? Annex File. That? Yep. So, what got you into reviewing anime as well? Well, again, really, it was just thinking of doing a review show that hadn't been done on that guy with glasses at the time. And, you know, I... You know, I was probably pegged as one of the anime people because well, my background's with Team Four Star. So I thought I'd just go and do that. You know, review the latest anime from Japan, the stuff that was just coming out. And it all started with that High School of the Dead review, which some people confused me to think I hated it. I thought it, I gave it a 7 out of 10, and but it did descend into mediocrity fairly soon after that. But... I learned a lot over the last couple of years, and unfortunately there won't be an Anafile this season because I've been working a lot. So there probably will be some something in terms of written articles, but in terms of video reviews, they won't be here for this season. But I will be certainly keeping an eye on the new season at least, because I think there are a couple of gems. Now, because you mentioned um, Team Four Star, and because you do your part of the Dragon Ball Bridge series, so how did you become... To be a part of that, did you just audition, or were you uh, scouted for it? Well, it was because me and Lanny Pator and one other, we did, we actually did the first two DBZ movies, uh, Dead Zone and The World's Strongest, and Kaiser had wanted to do... He'd been doing his loop on the third bridge, which I find very sh- a very great shame that it's not around, because I loved it. It's one of those few bridge series that actually feels natural, because Kaiser's loop on is just brilliant i mean i really admire it it just sounds so dead on i mean it's almost as good as tony oliver if not equal in my opinion at least and he had originally wanted to do dragon ball z but it's such a big undertaking there are so many characters and you you couldn't do it on your own so taka got talking with them taka harder 101 who did g gundam abridged and he got talking with Kaiser. They decided to join up together, and they approached me and Lanny, and we jumped at the chance because you know it's Dragon Ball Z. We we Dragon Ball Z. It's probably uh, for many other people their gateway uh, gateway show into anime, and it was just their first time they saw anime on TV. But yeah, that's how it all came about. And then episode one came out, and yeah, it's just gone from strength to strength. I mean, so. The- so, as you said, the show's gone for strength, and it's got in such a huge fan base now. I mean, how does it feel that to be a part of something so widely loved by people on the internet? Well, really, we had no idea it would get it would get this huge. We just did it because, and we still do it because we enjoy doing it. We enjoy voicing the characters and writing for it, and just DBC in general. It's just such a it's just such a fun thing to do. We never get tired of it. And I couldn't think of anything more fun to abridge, you know, or to help on, because getting the voice Goku is just fantastic. I mean, ultimately to the point where we've actually met and get on with the guy who actually directs the English dub, you know, to actually get to meet him at a convention and him know who I am is actually quite remarkable, but totally unexpected. And every time I go to a convention, I'm just bowled away by the level of support. Yeah, we thank everyone, and we really appreciate the actual, you know, kind of favour and admiration and respect, or just general awesomeness of the fans. We have no idea it would get this, it would go this far. We love, you know, we absolutely cherish it and absolutely feel grateful and appreciate every second of it. Now, of course, as well as being part of Team Four Star, as we mentioned before, you're part of that guy last com. So, how did you become the PO part of them as well? Did you? Um, submit a video to them or did they scout you out 
Well, Team Four Star and uh, that guy with the glasses back in 2009 did a sort of an affiliation briefly, and me and Lanny decided to do um, contribute some videos to the site. Lanny has done a few, and I've decided just to carry it on, and eventually I've just become a bit of the team, part of the Inked Reality Division, which does stuff on comic books and anime and you know, mostly cartoons. So, yeah, there are other contributors like uh, uh, The Last Angry Geek, um, you know, Why Ruler of Time, Linkara, of course, and Jezotaku, the Mars Girl. And, yeah, I'm just, I'm considered one of the anime reviewers on the site now as part of it. So, with all, with all this that you've done, uh, what have you got planned for the future? What can we, the fans, look forward to? Well, I've got a couple of things lined up, but it's all up in the air at the moment because of my work. And it's just because I work free, as a freelance editor, because fortunately, my job has, is also my hobby, which not many people can say these days. And I am absolutely bowled over and appreciate, appreciative for the fact that I, I can say that my editing has now meant that I've managed to make some kind of a living out of it. So um, I've got a couple of convention appearances i've got a couple of projects up in the works so I'm, I'm keeping myself busy that's for sure well, i can definitely say that whatever you're going to be bringing out we're all going to be looking forward to to okay. it and unfortunately that's all the time we've got today so thank you very much for coming on the show you've been a terrific guest well thank you very much for having me so ladies and gentlemen miles of X. catch you later 19 caboose 15 catch you next time <laughs>